in the lesson in the 11th session we'll go for the second half of the functions functions and its categories function without arguments and with return without return values these are simple functions like function which takes no arguments and which have no return which return nothing for example now say void main i say function i am calling a function now in the function i simply say printf in function so it's quite simple that this is a function fn is a function which takes no arguments and which returns nothing so it is clear that in the set of braces if i say nothing it takes zero arguments and if i don't use any return statement it returns nothing a quite simple function functions with arguments and without return value i pass an argument consider i which holds 3 at the beginning now i say i over here because i is an integer receive it or here with another integer it can be a j or it can be i the name cannot can differ or it can remain the same in function person d that person d is for j into j so here i'm calling the function and i'm passing 3 and i'm receiving in j so i'll be printing that square over here so in function 9 is the output instead of initializing my variable i i'll scan it over here scan f person d comma ampersand i now the value whatever i give is stored in the address of i and is passed to the function so even if i say 5 it will display in function 25 so this is a program in which i am passing an argument and i am returning nothing so this is the second type the first type is passing nothing and return nothing and the second type is passing an argument without return statement and now comes functions with arguments and with return value now instead of calculating over here i'll return the calculated value return j into j now because i'm returning some value i need to hold it in another variable s holds that other variable now when i say printf in main person d that is s so i'm calling the function and i'm passing an argument i whatever user gives i'll store it in the address of i and i pass that value j receives it the calculation j into j happens and i'm returning it so i need to store it in other variable s which i'm printing as holds the square of the given variable one main important thing to note about when we are returning something when we are using the return statement it is mandatory to say what type are we returning is because j is of type integer j into j also returns an integer so say int if i am returning a float i need to say float but because this is an integer i'll stick to integer the value let it be 9 in main it's 81 so if you return nothing then say void if you return something then say what type are you returning is it an integer then return integer if it is a float then return float here is the example i will along with syntax function with arguments and without return values function name and the argument list number of arguments can be passed the data type usually void and argument list and so on the statements what all you feel function with arguments and with return values function name the number of arguments you want to pass data type arguments and so on return the value at the end 
calling functions we can call functions by two ways first one is call by value we'll go for seeing what exactly call by value even this is a call by value example but let me take a very good good example one in main which returns nothing and so void has been used i have integer with 10 and j with 20 when i say printf in main for the first time i holds the value person d and j holds the value person d that is for i comma j i call the function and pass i comma j so in function which also returns nothing but receives two integers in i and j it can be anything it can be x or y anything now in i i'll be placing the incremented value likewise in j i'll be placing the incremented value now i'll print in function i equal to person d j equal to person d comma i comma j after that if i say print f in main for the second time i holds person d j holds person d comma i comma j now if you see what exactly happens in this program is integer i which holds 10 at the beginning and integer j which holds 20 i'll be printing 10 and 20 on the screen i'm passing the value of 10 and 20 to the function there the 10 and 20 are again received in i and j which are of different variables 10 plus 1 11 into i 20 plus 1 21 into j now i'll print in function 11 and 21 after coming back to 9 main if i execute this print of statement i won't be getting 10 and 20 so i i'll be getting 10 and 20 even if i do some kind of manipulations on i and j though they are not reflected in the main functions even the changes what all we are doing on the function are not affecting my main function this is called as call by value when we go for call by reference the exact thing happens but before going for call by reference we need to take up a new topic called as pointers that we'll see in further sections but before that there is another topic in functions which is called as recurrence functions a recurrence function can be defined as a function which calls itself again and again for certain number of times that is called as recursive function we'll see with an example this program execution begins from main there i have a call to function so i'll go to function and again in that function i'm calling the same again so i'll go back to function for the second time calling it going back to the function for the third time so there is this is a never ending program this is an indefinite function call so i said a fu recursive function is nothing but calling the function itself for some number of times but how exactly is it possible because it is making it an indefinite call so recursive function by nature is an indefinite function call to make it definite we need to use an if else condition now the recurrence function can be better explained by taking up two programs one is the one we already did that was the factorial program and the other the new one which we'll see later on 
So I'll be using the factorial program with recursive concept now, as we did the no, factorial program normally. To repeat the loop, I ask the user to scan some value, scan f percent d comma ampersand n. Now the value what user has given is stored in the variable n. Call the function and pass n. And it returns certain value which will be given to the variable f. So I am printing percent d comma f. Declare the variable. Now in the function as I said it returns something and is given into f so it means that the function definition should be integer function because it returns something and we are passing a variable the value given by user that is an receive it in same variable or different variable check if n less than or equal to 1 return 1 else return n into function of n minus 1. So, here consider if your value given by user is 5. We say function 5, we are passing 5 and so it receives it. 5 less than 1 is false, so you will come to else block 5 into now call, again calling the same function, you are in the function and you are calling the same function. So this time 5 into but the argument is 5 minus 1 4. So you will go over here with the value and take 4. 4 less than 1 is false. Previously it was 5 into now this time it is 4 into fact of 3, fun of 3. So it is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Finally do the multiplication and give it to the variable f printing it on the screen. If my input is 5 I will be getting The mistake done was f takes 1 at the beginning, place 1 or simply leave f in the same way, we will be getting the factorial. Even give 6, it's 720. So this is the concept of factorial programming by using recursive call. It's passing the value, you say you check it, 5 less than 1 false, come to else block, 5 into fact fun of 4 go for fun of 4 4 less than 1 false now this time 4 into 5 into 4 into fun of 3 so likewise it will keep on calculating the values until unless the value of n is not less than or equal to 1 similarly using the uh, recursive call in a new program called as Fibonacci series whose output should be will be beginning with 0 and 1 later on displaying 1, 2, 3, 5 and 8, 13, 21. But on what basis I am saying all this series? This series is called as Fibonacci series. Fibonacci series. So I said we will be starting up with 0 and 1. 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 5, 8, 5 plus 8, 13, 13 plus 20, 8, 21. So this way we will be printing all our series. Start up with a 0 and b with 1, c takes the addition and uh, will place a while condition which says the number of iterations while i begin with 1 and the condition i less than or equal to 10 and in that say c takes up the addition of a plus b printing percent d comma c it prints the addition so we'll be skipping up saying 0 and 1 as they are already defined we'll be starting up with 
all this series 1 2 3 5 8 and so on so 1 is on the screen 0 plus 1 1 is on the screen now we need to interchange the values as this is a and b now we need to add these two to get the c value but this is b and this is c so make b as a what all b holds give it to a and what all c holds give it to b and repeat the loop making i plus plus so it will print all the series which come for 10 limit this is called as fibonacci series now doing the same thing in by using the recursive call which goes in this way integer a takes 0 comma b takes 1 so an integer variable to repeat the loop let it begin with 1 while i less than or equal to 10 and say call the function pass the value i which returns some value so accept it in f a variable and print it on screen increment the value of i back in the function this int function receive it in the variable i or any other thing if i is less than or equal to 1 return 1 else return fun of i minus 1 plus fun of i minus 2 is what we need to return so what exactly we mean by this so you can see the values have been printed in Fibonacci series but how exactly is this working now as you can see i begins with 1 which holds 1 less than or equal to 10 that is true so pass 1 so i receives the variable 1 1 less than or equal to 1 yes true so return 1 later on that return value is given into the variable f and is printed on the screen later on i plus plus happens so this time i is 2 2 less than 10 yes it's true so pass the value 2 I receives the value 2, 2 less than or equal to 1 is false, now come to uh, else block, here fact of 2 minus 1 that is 1, fact of 1 plus fact of 0, what is fact of 1, we need to find it out, so again I am calling the same function, I am in the function, I am calling the same function, this time I receives 1, 1 less than 1 is 1, yes return 1, this is for this particular block, what about fact of 0? I receive 0, 0 less than 1, yes return 1, so finally I will be returning 1 plus 1 which is 2 and is printed, return to the variable f and is printed on the screen. Now i plus plus happens making it as 3. So likewise this works for up to 10 calls, finally printing all the Fibonacci series.